Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Muna Yadav and in this video we are going to learn about expansion devices. So the various expansion devices which are used in refrigeration and air conditioning systems are hand or manual expansion valves, capillary tubes, orifice, constant pressure or automatic expansion valve AEV, thermostatic expansion valve TEV, float type expansion valve which are further classified as high side float valve, low side float valve, electronic expansion valve and fixed opening type or variable opening type of expansion devices. So first of all what is the function of expansion device? So the function of expansion device is to reduce pressure and control flow of refrigerant to the evaporator. So the basic type of expansion device which is generally used in most of the refrigeration or air conditioning systems is capillary tube. So a capillary tube is a long narrow tube of constant diameter. The pressure reduction in a capillary tube occurs due to following two factors. The refrigerant has to overcome the frictional resistance offered by tube walls. This leads to some pressure drop. And the liquid refrigerant flashes into mixture of liquid and vapor as its pressure reduces. The density of vapor is less than that of the liquid. Hence the average density of refrigerant decreases as it flows in the tube. The mass flow rate and the tube diameter being constant, the velocity of refrigerant increases. Since m is equal to rho Va, the increase in velocity or acceleration of the refrigerant also requires pressure drop. Some of advantages of capillary tube are, it is inexpensive, it does not have any moving parts, Hence, it does not require maintenance. Capillary tube provides an open connection between condenser and the evaporator. Hence, during off-cycle, pressure equalization occurs between the condenser and evaporator. This reduces the starting torque requirement of the motor since motor starts with same pressure on the two sides of compressor. Ideal for hermetic compressor based systems which are critically charged and factory assembled. Some of the disadvantages of the capillary tube are it cannot adjust itself to changing flow conditions in response to daily and seasonal variation in ambient temperature and load. Hence COP is usually low under off design conditions. It is susceptible to clogging because of narrow bore of the tube. Hence utmost care is required at the time of assembly. A filter dryer should be used ahead of the capillary to prevent entry of the moisture or any solid particles. During off cycle, liquid refrigerant flows to evaporator because of pressure difference between condenser and evaporator. The evaporator may get flooded and the liquid refrigerant may flow to compressor and damage it when it starts. Therefore, critical charge is used in capillary tube based systems. Further, it is used only with hermetically sealed compressors where refrigerant does not leak so that critical charge can be used. Normally an accumulator is provided after the evaporator to prevent slugging of compressor. Next are automatic expansion valve AEV. As the name itself gives that the operation of valve is automatic and once the tension of the spring is adjusted. So these are the adjustable spring, this is the adjustable screw. This is the diaphragm, this is the needle, strainer, this is the line from condenser and this is the line to the evaporator. This is the orifice and this is the follow-up spring. So once the tension of the spring is adjusted for the desired evaporator pressure, the valve will automatically regulate the flow of liquid refrigerant into evaporator and the desired evaporator pressure is maintained irrespective of evaporator loading. Important characteristic of the valve is that it will close off tightly when the compressor cycles off and remain closed until the compressor cycle gets on again. It has relatively poor efficiency as compared to the other refrigerant flow controls. As this valve permits only a small portion of evaporator to be filled with liquid during the periods when the load on the system is heavy, the constant pressure characteristic limits the capacity and efficiency of the refrigeration system at a time when the high capacity and high efficiency is desired. If the load on evaporator is permitted to fall below certain level, the valve is in attempt to keep the evaporator pressure up and it can overfeed the evaporator. Liquid will enter the suction line and can be carried to the compressor where it may cause serious damage. So because of its poor efficiency under heavy load conditions, automatic expansion valve is best applied only to 
small equipment having relatively constant load example domestic refrigerator freezer retail ice cream storage cabinets etc so next is thermostatic expansion valve tev or txp the name thermostatic expansion valve may give the impression that this is a temperature control but it is not a temperature control and it cannot be adjusted and used to vary evaporator temperature actually it is a throttling device which works automatically maintaining proper and correct liquid flow as per the load on the evaporator the operation of the valve is based on principle of constant degree of superheat for the evaporator exit this ensures the evaporator completely filled with refrigerant irrespective of the load and also no liquid can spill over to the suction line to the compressor because of its adaptability to load changes it is mainly suitable for variable load system so the various parts of thermostatic expansion valve are capillary tube this is the filler bulb this is the suction line and this is superheated refrigerant to the compressor this is the adjustable spring this is the screw high pressure liquid is entering from this side these are the bellows this is the needle stand and from here the refrigerant is fed to the evaporator and then to the suction line any change in degree of superheat of suction gas will alter the valve position if the degree of superheat is less than 5 degree celsius the sum of evaporator and spring pressure will exceed the pressure exerted by the bulb this will tend to close the valve and throttle the flow to the evaporator till the same degree of superheat is obtained the advantage of thermostatic expansion valve compared to other types of expansion devices are it provides excellent control of refrigeration capacity as the supply of refrigerant to the evaporator matches the demand it ensures the evaporator operates efficiently by preventing starving under high load conditions it protects the compressor from slugging by ensuring a minimum degree of superheat under all conditions of load if properly selected now next are float type expansion valves so float type expansion valves are normally used with flooded evaporators in large capacity refrigeration systems a float type valve opens or closes depending upon the liquid level as sensed by a buoyant member called as float so these can be classified as low side float valves and high side float valves a low side float valve maintains a constant liquid level in a flooded evaporator or a float chamber attached to the evaporator a high side float valve maintains the liquid level constant in a float chamber that is connected to the condenser on the high pressure side so this is the diagram which represents high side float chamber so this is the line from condenser and this is the line to the evaporator so float valve is operated and this is the high side float chamber next is electronic type of expansion valve so this is the diagram for electronic type of expansion valve where this is the refrigerant inlet this is the needle this is electronic expansion valve this is heater this is liquid sensing thermistor this is evaporator and this is the refrigerant outlet so exposure of thermistor to the superheated vapor permits thermistor to self heat thereby lowering its resistance and increasing the heater current this opens the valve wider and increases the mass flow rate of refrigerant so in this way the flow through the electronic type of expansion valve is maintained thank you